I have heard a lot about excess deaths, writes Stevanovich. The analysis uses a five-year rolling average. Understanding that this is meant to smooth out the signal from the noise, is five years really the best time frame? Do we see similar excesses when longer time frames are utilized? Would 10, 20, etc. years give different results? This is an interesting question, and I haven't thought question. I haven't thought enough about exactly what is being done. This is this is a question that is new to me. I haven't given this any thought before. Um, I guess I'd like to see it. I, I'd like. Mm, I was going to say I'd like to see it done, but I'd I'd like to know first what I think, and I'm not sure yet what I think. Um, I think for this set of questions, you are inherently looking for a short time scale. And that the question of time scale is always going to be um, it is always going to be heavily affected by what process you are interested in discovering its presence or absence. So I do think short time scales you have to do it on that because let's say that we're looking for I mean what we're really looking for is excess deaths as a result of COVID alone, and then using that to, to find excess deaths that are the result of COVID plus uh, the so-called vaccines. And you have, let's put it this way, if you're looking for the signal of the vaccines, the comparison has a built-in conservatism, which is good. The chances that you will see a phantom that isn't there are reduced because mm -hmm. um, the because to the extent that certain people were very vulnerable to COVID, many of them were lost or became immune because they got it and survived it, or became somewhat immune. And right. so, to the extent you see excess deaths in 2021 that you didn't see in 2020, it implies something about our remedies. Yeah, but I mean, this five-year rolling average thing, I'm just not sure exactly what is being done. So I mean, I feel like this is a statistical question and neither you nor I, I think from what you just said, know exactly what is being done. The five-year rolling average suggests that something is being done mathematically that I'm not totally clear on. And you know, one of the things that is true is that we effectively have three moments in time uh, that we are interested in comparing to one another. And one of them, you know, is 2019 and earlier. And one of them is just 2020 and really, you know, just three quarters of 2020, really, uh, which is COVID but no vaccines. And one is 2021 going forward. And because that middle period, which is, um, yes, COVID, no vaccines, no COVID vaccines, is so short, I think, therefore, you want, um, the, if, if it's a rolling average, you want that, that, that unit to be as short as possible as well. But I, I, I have to know exactly what is being done. Yeah, I mean, I would, one of my favorite people on topics of uh, COVID hazard is John Campbell. And the reason that I say that he's one of my favorites is that he has been in my opinion if you're trying to figure out what's going on more careful than necessary he has erred in the direction of being careful while not being the least bit cowardly with respect to talking about what he was seeing yep um the one place uh, that he is uh he did uh, check out his last video on excess deaths or recent video on excess deaths. He goes through the logic of it very carefully. He does establish that there's a very clear signal. He talks about all of the possibilities that he can come up with for explanations, save one, which he says, look, I'm forbidden to talk about this one because of YouTube community guidelines, mm -hmm. which leaves you to connect the dots um, you know, and I wish he hadn't had to do that, but I understand why he did. But anyway, yep. he's been so careful about these analyses that I think you'll be struck um, by uh, what he does. Now, the work wasn't his. He's reviewing work that was done by somebody else. So it's conceivable that he would have chosen a different uh, time period. But I think the answer is these things aren't heavily sensitive 
to you know the difference between a five year or a six year right it might be a difference between you know a five year and a ten year shows a substantial uh change in the direction of noise because it includes a period that is less comparable right the number of things that is different right. over a 10 year period will be less clear, yeah um so anyway i think the point is the pattern is so clear that one doesn't need to worry terribly much about whether that's exactly the right period over which to study it right but you i mean if if a 10 or 20 year rolling average would uh reveal less pattern and you, you know you really think that the pattern is so clear you should put it to that analysis and then be able to say, see, I went conservative here. Like, I, you know, this, this, this would be less likely to reveal pattern and it still does. Well, but I don't think that's how it works because the problem of what factor is captured in a 20 year rolling average that would be absent from a five means that it's not inherently conservative. It's noisy and high variance. Um, so you might, augment a pattern beyond what it actually is you might erase a pattern that actually is and the, the the thing that we can say is that the period of time that is most similar to the one we live in is the one directly prior to it yep